Hello, it's Sis Volk. Time to enjoy card making with me. In this video, I'm going to work with the hot foil machine again. Today, I am using the Spellbinders sealed squiggles and the geometric diamond background glimmer plate. I love it so much. To work with it, you need a hot foil machine. You use it to heat the glimmer plate and then run the plates through your die cutting machine and seal the foil. Although you can also use the glimmer plates as a letterpress, so as embossing in your paper using only a die cutting machine and a rubber mat. But if you want to do it with foil, you need a hot foil machine. If you are interested in seeing how I work with the machine and see more cards I made, I'll link to a video up here on the top right corner. There I also used the Spellbinder sealed squiggles before. They are so much fun and also very versatile, which is why I use them in ways other than the way you would expect to use them. Let's begin. I have already foiled two backgrounds with the Spellbinders Geometric Diamond background glimmer plate. I foiled with silver foil on red linen cardstock and on white DCP paper. The plate is an American size of 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches in size. And I already trimmed it a little bit because I use other sizes for my cards in the Netherlands. I use an A4 paper. When I cut it in half and then fold it in half, I have two double card bases. The width of such a card is then 10.5 cm and the length is 14.8 cm. For this panel I want to cut exactly to the tip of the pattern. I'll do the same on the other side. So the top diamonds will then just remain intact. Then of course I have a border left over at the top and bottom. You can leave it as it is or color it or glue a border on top or underneath. You'll see later how to fix this. I use different types of paper to die cut and layer the sealed squiggles. I have red cardstock, silver, black, I have white cardstock and I have a small piece of vellum. All the pieces of paper, except the vellum, I covered with double sided tape and I covered the white paper on two sides. I'll explain why. The tape I like to use is from Alina Craft. I'll link to that below. They are really nice double sided sheets of tape in A4 size. I find them very handy to use when you want to die cut delicate dies. The brand of Alina Craft is called Alina Cuttle and I also use the vellum from this brand. I'm going to die cut the sealed squiggles from these sheets of paper. Once from the red paper, once from the silver paper and once from the black paper. I will also die cut the double sided tape white paper to be able to stick the open parts behind the vellum or to stick on dies that don't have double sided tape on them. Later I'm sure it will become clear to you. If you die cut all those squiggles, you have a good chance that the backing of the double sided tape will come off. And I don't want to lose the adhesive or pull the die out of shape, so I temporarily stick it on a used piece of backing from the A4 sheet of double sided tape. I have already die cut the red sealed squiggles and off camera I will die cut the black and silver ones as well. I'm going to show you something. Now when I would stick the silver flower directly on the sealed background like this, it falls away in the background. You can look through it. The background pattern is distracting and the flower won't stand out. To solve this, stick the flower on a piece of vellum. And I also do this with the leaf, because it also has an open shape. Now remember that the die cut shape has double sided adhesive on the back, so no glue smudges and you can easily reposition the die if you wish until you press it down firmly. I see now that I have incredibly dry hands. The heating is on again and I can tell immediately by dry skin. I'm going to remember to use hand cream more frequently. Well, I cut out the shapes as close to the die cut edge as possible. So I try not to let any of the vellum stick out. I've said it before, cutting with small pointed scissors works best. Also, the slower you cut, the better it goes. 
I keep the die cut shape still and my scissors slightly angled. So I cut just below the edge. This video is sped up, so as not to make the video too long. But if you cut, take your time. Now you can already see an immediate difference. The vellum underneath makes the flower suddenly stand out much more. On the squiggles that I have die cut from red paper, I'm going to apply some oxide ink. For this I use Ranger's Black Suit Oxide Ink and the domed blending tool. Very carefully I'm going to darken the stems slightly from bottom to top. I do this with a dabbing motion, very carefully, because they are very fragile. And even though there is double sided tape on the back, it does slide a bit on this foil. It is ideal to use this foil, because I don't want to lose the stickiness of my double sided tape. This ink always has to dry a bit, but I don't have the patience for that right now. You will have to be careful not to make fingerprints in places you don't want ink. I let the color fade from dark at the bottom to light at the top, and then I use a tissue to smooth out the ink a bit. Too much ink is also absorbed by the tissue. And it allows me to continue working faster without making too many fingerprints. I now stick these colored squiggles first on a black die cut shape. I glue it right on top. It makes the die cut a little thicker and firmer. This layer I stick on the silver squiggle, the one that the vellum is already behind. But this layer I stick a little shifted, so you can still see the silver coming out from under it, which also makes the stem a little wider. It is a bit of fiddling, but I actually found it quite doable. The same goes for the leaf. Because of the layers and the shifted layer, you also see a little more depth. Well, so I layer these all up. Silver at the bottom, then shifted, on top of that black, and then the red, which I partially ink blended with black ink. With the flower and the leaf, I glue the piece of vellum under the silver. Soon I will continue with the sealed squiggles. I'm now going to foil the text for the card on vellum first. I'm using the vellum from Alina Craft. The glimmer text plate I will be using is the Spellbinders Happy Birthday Glimmer Plate that comes with the hot foil machine. On another piece of vellum I fold one of the texts that come with the Sealed by Spellbinders collection. Links for all the products I will put for you in the description below the video. I choose the sentiment have a wonderful day. For convenience I stick the foil and glimmer text plates to the vellum with some washi tape. It's so much easier that way because you want to avoid shifting. I put the plate flat side down on the hot foil machine with the foil on top, pretty side first and mat side facing the vellum. Then I put the two plates on top, press the timer button and wait for the light to flash. When the light comes on, I take out all the plates and run it through the die cut machine. I have a brand new machine, so running it through once without an extra shim is more than enough. Previously I did use an extra shim, unfortunately because of this you can already see some impressions in the plate, but this makes no difference for foiling new impressions thankfully. Oh, this turned out so really nice! Foiling on vellum works just as easy as on paper. And it's also so nice that you can put it on a busy surface and still see through it if necessary. I will trim this happy birthday strip a bit smaller though. As mentioned earlier, my card is narrower and longer than the American standard size. I have already trimmed the foil background with the geometric diamond glimmer plate. Two red strips will later replace the empty open space above and below the card panel. The red strips are about 1.5 cm wide. I pick up a very small amount of oxide ink on a domed blending tool. And then I wipe a little ink on the edge of the strip. With a tissue I smoothen it out a little bit, creating a nice gradient. 
Oxiding is very nice for this because it covers colored paper very well. I do the same for the other strip. If you find it difficult to stick a strip of paper straight along the edge of the card, it may well be useful to use a tool for that that has a raised edge. For example, you can use the inside of your stamping tool, but I grabbed my scoring board. You then loosen the strip of double sided tape on one side. Then you tape it in place at the point where the non sticky side is well in place. And then you can pull off the backing strip and stick the strip. If you turn the card over, you can also do this for the strip at the bottom. See? Also included with the Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine was a very handy tool that I am now using. It is the tool in one, in case you don't know it yet. You can use it to easily remove dies from their shape. And also prick all sorts of things that I used to always use my needle for. As you may know from my previous videos. Now I expect to reach for my needle quite often out of habit. But this thing is really quite handy. I now stick the foil panel with the diamonds in the middle on top of the card. You can see that I loosened the strips of double sided tape only at the corners in order to stick nice and straight and in the middle. In retrospect I could have waited with this until the vellum is on because now my card is getting a little thick. So if you are going to recreate this, skip this step. Now we take the sealed squiggles out again. I want to make these even thicker. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I like it nice and sturdy with extra depth. It is totally up to you if you do this also. Behind the closed shapes with vellum, I stick another layer die cut from the white paper with double sided tape on both sides. This way they are a bit higher and the vellum does not lay flat on the card which gives depth. I also reinforce the ordinary figures with an extra die cut layer. The handy thing about the double sided tape is that it makes it easy to position the figures without messing around with glue. Only when they are in the right place do I press them on. Look, I found a roll of very beautiful silver thread. It belonged to my mother-in-law who could make beautiful lace. I can do it a little bit, but don't allow myself the time. I have more patience for card making. I don't have a plan when making this bow. I just wrap it around a few times and then make a bow. And because I find the thread a little thin and the opening a too bare, I make another bow in the middle with the same thread. The stems I want to glue on a little more firmly. And for that I use a glue dot. Actually, these are dots of glue on a roll of tape. If I roll up such a glue dot, it fits nicely under the wrapped piece of string and then it sticks nicely. These glue dots are also from Alina Craft. Vellum is always difficult to glue because it's translucent. If you turn the panel over, you can clearly see where the tape should go. The vellum sticks best to the back of the panel. That's why I left the strip wider than the card. I can fold over the protruding parts nicely and they stick to the tape on the back. I have already removed the backing from the tape, but wanted to be able to lay the card flat for a moment. Then it is handy to use a piece of backing from a piece of double sided tape as a surface. It won't stick to it. I can now fold the sides of the vellum to the back where the tape strips are. The panel must still be glued to a folded card. As I said before, I would have better glued the vellum on before gluing the fold background to the card with the wrapped strips. Because now I actually have a piece of paper too much in between. And you must glue it again to a base card because otherwise you will see the folded edges on the back. The card turned out beautifully. You can see the layered squiggles very clearly. You can see the silver shifted a tiny bit, giving it depth. The squiggles are also ink blended from darker at the bottom to lighter at the top. The same goes for the red strip of above and below. Dark below and light above. 
the beautiful text is fold in silver on vellum. And also there is vellum behind the flower and petal, so the diamond pattern does not show through. I made a matching envelope with a red and silver die cut squiggle on it. And the silver keeps coming back in the hot foil, the dies and in the thread. I also foiled the geometric diamond background shimmer plate with silver foil on the same red paper. It is solid red linen cardstock by the way. I want to use this piece of paper on a squared card. My square cards are always 13.5 cm in size. With a ruler I measure the size of the piece of paper. Just cutting a piece off is a waste. I measure exactly if I cut the same amount of the diamond pattern on both sides, so the pattern comes out even. I glue the piece of vellum to the back of the panel with double sided tape. I look carefully at the diamond pattern to make sure the strip is centered. Be careful not to fold the vellum too tightly. If you do, the paper will bulge. By aligning the paper in reverse along the lines of your work mat, you can see exactly if you are gluing the strip nice and straight. Here I have yet another handy way for you to reuse the back of the double sided tape. From such a roll of foam tape I find it easiest to cut strips when they are stuck on. Your scissors won't stick as easily then and you can measure the length nicely. Behind the panel I use these strips of double sided foam tape. And then with that I stick this red panel raised on the card. Here I have a white die cut squiggle which I glued onto a piece of vellum and cut it out all around. So only the bottom of the white paper contained double sided tape for die cutting. Now I will glue another white die cut on underneath this for the dimension. This second one has double sided tape on both sides. The bottom protective layer has already come off during die cutting and I pull off the top layer. And I stick it right under the top die so that the vellum is in between. It's just very hard to do with glue without messing, especially when you have vellum in between. And this is how it works very easily. This is how you make several flowers and spread them on the card. I basically made a triangle in my arrangement. I also make several red squiggles and again I ink blend the stems. It is actually not ink blending but more like pushing ink on them because of course I already die cut them and therefore they are very fragile and they stick together. I also briefly wipe these off first and then I stick them on a black die cut shape. Again, you don't necessarily have to do this, but since the white squiggles are already too layered because of the vellum in between, it is nice to make these red ones too layered as well. I stick these red squiggles on the other corners and other spots of the card. If you were to spread the card into imaginary boxes, you would have 9 boxes, with the text in the middle. The squiggles will fill the remaining 8 boxes. The vellum is only behind the white dies. Had I also put vellum behind the red dies, this would have been double and the red ones would be too white compared to the white squiggles. Because they all point to the center, there is a nice distribution and the shiny text in the center stands out nicely. The overhanging parts can be cut off. And so can the envelope, on which I stick a red and white one. This way you can decorate an envelope very quickly, very cute. And so we made another very cute card. By making the middle panel square you suddenly have a very different card. The glimmer plate is much larger. It's 11.4 by 14.6 cm. So in addition to the 4.25 and, and 5.5 inch card you can make two other sizes with the same glimmer plate. I used the scraps I cut up the fold background for another card. In fact, I also made this card. I used all the leftovers I had. I had two edges left over and I also kept the sides I had cut from the diamond background. 
This time I did not use them to glue on the envelope, but I glued them slightly below the center as a nice border. For the previous cards I made more dies than I needed and the ones I had left over I used on this card. The squiggles are not layered, so not as thick as the previous ones and therefore this card is a little lighter and also easier to send. I had fold the sending strength on a crooked piece of paper and I actually liked using it that way, so I left it so crooked on purpose. For this card I used a very nice 3D embossing folder from Spellbinders. I will put a link to it in the description. I think it is really huge, the card can be put in twice. To give the card some more bling, I added three shiny gems. The gems I have are from Alina Craft. You will find a link of them in the description below the video as well. Alina sells on AliExpress. It is a good store that only sells original designs and a good quality, so take a look. I made two more cards using the same set, but used the products in a different way. Here you see a square birthday card I made. This is the flower and this is the squiggle that looks like birthday banners this way upside down. I used silver foil with a diamond glimmer plate on white paper and cut it square. Again I ink blended this one black at the bottom. I used the same happy birthday that I used on the vellum. I will show the birthday glimmer plate for you again. It is the happy birthday glimmer plate that you get with the hot foil system when you buy it. I fold it with gold foil on red linen cardstock. I cut it out by hand and ink blended the edges a bit with black oxide ink to get the same dimension as on the squiggles. A little message to say, I also cut it crooked on this card on purpose because I already liked it so much on the previous one. I cut the geometric diamond background glimmer foil print at 11.5 by 11.5 cm. Underneath is a piece of red linen cardstock which I very lightly ink blended with black suit oxide ink. The white piece of paper was glued on with foam tape raised, as was the text. Underneath the squiggles is an extra layer of black dyes, so they are a little higher and firmer on the paper and a few squiggle scraps and an edge of the diamond glimmer background on the envelope. Festive card I think, the squiggles are like garlands. Then I made another one, a Christmas card. Here I also used the same geometric diamond background glimmer plate, but this time I cut a narrower strip of foil when foiling, which was narrower than the paper was tall. This allows you to see the center foiled and the edges letter pressed. This also gives you a very nice effect. I also die cutted the sealed twine out of gold cardstock and folded it around the panel. I glued it on with a foam block in the middle, as I did in the previous video. I'll link that below and in the top right corner. In addition, I used the flower squiggle as an extra twine to put on top. The flower squiggle lies nicely as a seal on top of the red flower. The stem of the flower is now an extra twine to go with the sealed twine. I'm using the Santa Lane floral die cut shapes from the Santa Lane collection. I'll link to that below. There are lots of floral die cut shapes in one package. I have already made many cards with them and I still have lots of flowers left over. In my shorts videos I show all the cards, but here briefly a very quick look at them. There are really beautiful flowers, also with full details. And by combining them with a full background glimmer plate or the sealed squiggles, you suddenly have a different look. I also use the Santa Lane stickers for the text Happy Holidays. I have already made many cards with that too, which you can see back in my shorts. The letters of the word joy are really pretty. They are gold puffy alphabet stickers. There are large and small letters. I can still make plenty of cards with them and I will be using them for sure. 
lots of text and letters too. Very handy. Well, on the envelope I also glued a flower with the golden squiggles flower on top. So simple, but looks so incredibly beautiful. Do you also like to make Christmas cards during or just after Christmas? Then you are totally in the mood and there is no pressure to finish the cards in time. I really like that and then I make a supply of cards for the coming year. By the way, there is a Christmas clearance sale at Spellbinders. They offer 50% off select Christmas collections. The sale will run through December the 26th. Maybe there is something in there for you. I myself have enjoyed working with the hot foil and the sealed squiggles. I love geometric figures and it is also so much fun to combine them with all kinds of other products. Which card do you like best? You can see all the cards even better on my Facebook and Instagram channel where I post pictures of them. Links to the products can be found in the description below this video, as well as links to other videos I made. If you subscribe to my channel Sysvolk, you will not miss any of my new videos. It is so much fun to make a video for you, but it is also a lot of work and I love to hear your reactions. Would you like to write a comment below? You will make me very happy. Have a nice day and I wish you a Merry Christmas time! Bye-bye!